I'm Commander Xegeus, and today we're going to be looking at the various HOTUS controllers available for Elite Dangerous. HOTUS, which stands for Hands-On Throttle and Stick, is a controller type consisting of a stick for the right hand and a throttle for the left. While some will argue that Dual Stick is the best controller type, for many a HOTUS is the pinnacle of controller for space and flight simulation games. Let's take a look at some of the most popular models available and which ones I'd recommend for those considering a HOTUS purchase. I should begin by saying this is a highly subjective topic. Someone will likely feel each controller on the market is the best choice. They aren't necessarily wrong as there are many factors that go into choosing a HOTUS. Here we're going to look at them as objectively as possible, comparing the price, features, and build quality of each. We'll look at them one by one, starting with the least expensive to the most, finally comparing all the various features, ending with my picks for the best purchase. I've been able to get flight time with most and will note those where I'm relying on the input of friends or the net. As this is ultimately subjective, I hope you'll share your opinions in the comments below. Let's start with the least expensive HOTUS available, the T-Flight HOTUS by Thrustmaster. This entry-level HOTUS is available in two varieties, the PC and PS4 version and the Xbox One version. The T-Flight is designed as a single unit for lap use, but can split into a more traditional stick and throttle for desk use. The stick features a single, four-way hat and four buttons with twist ability, generally for yaw. The throttle offers six additional buttons and a single axis. This somewhat limited button selection necessitates modifier buttons, that is using combination of buttons for various functions. This can make the learning curve a bit steep for some, yet easier for others as there are less individual buttons to learn. These are my choice for someone on a very tight budget, as a cheap HOTUS is better than no HOTUS. Next up, we have the T16000M FCS, also from Thrustmaster. With the FCS, we're not only treated to higher build quality over the T-Flight, but to a number of additional buttons and inputs. On the stick, we again have a single four-way hat, but get an additional 13 buttons, totaling 17. Twist for Yaw is also included, as is an additional axis that can be used for throttle or something such as sensor zoom. The throttle also adds a number of additional inputs, with three four-way hats and an analog axis which works wonderfully for thrusters. There are three momentary buttons and an up-down rocker and left-right paddles. One primary difference in the throttle is that it's a sliding mechanism, rather different than the rocker style of most other throttles we'll look at. While this matches the style of the in-game ships in Elite, Personally, I'm not a fan, as to my hands, the throttle feels very flimsy and cheaply made. I do like the placement of the analog axis for thrusters, but found the left-right paddles to be very awkwardly placed and unpleasant to use. I should also note that the ambidextrous nature of the stick means that you can purchase an additional stick only for dual sticks, the least expensive option for such control. For me though, the 16,000M FCS was by far my least favorite of all of the options. Now we have the Logitech X52, previously from SciTech. With the X52, we get a noticeable upgrade in feel over the T-Flight and FCS with soft touch grips and excellent ergonomics. The upgrades aren't just cosmetic as we get a number of additional input options with the stick having two four-way hats, three buttons, one of which is behind a safety cover, a standard and pinky trigger, three two-way rocker switches, and a single rotary mode knob. The throttle also feels great in the hand, but does give up two of the four-way hats of the FCS with just a single hat, a slider axis, three rotary dials, and a small pointer stick that acts as a mouse. You also get a small LCD screen to control the various modes and button mappings, allowing for easy switching between profiles for various games or game modes. Given its excellent ergonomics, aesthetics, features, and price, this is definitely my choice for a mid-level priced HOTUS and I think is well worth the additional cost over the Thrustmaster 16000M FCS. Let's now take a look at a far less popular contender, the CH Products Fighter Stick and Pro Throttle. These are both updated USB versions of their very long-running products, which are likely popular with very long-term flight sim enthusiasts. While made of plastic, they offer very high build quality with excellent community ratings. The stick offers three four-way hats with one at your thumb and a single eight-way hat. Primary and secondary fire buttons with three additional buttons and a pinky mode switch round out the features. The throttle offers a slider design similar to the 16000M FCS but of a much higher quality with five four-way hats. Unfortunately, we only have three additional buttons and no switches or mode dials, somewhat limiting your mapping choices. 
While these are very well made, their rather antiquated styling means they don't appeal to many modern gamers. Moving up the ranks, next we have the X56 Rhino, also from Logitech. Another visually appealing stick with excellent ergonomics, it is held back only by its slightly cheaper feel with thinner plastics and switches, especially the pinky trigger. We're treated to an additional hat, bringing the stick's options to three with a thumb secondary fire, finger, and pinky trigger. We also see a four-way stick for the right thumb, making menu navigation much more efficient. You can also change out the spring for a stiffer feel and detach the stick from the base for easier storage or transportation. The throttle is the least expensive to offer a split dual throttle design that can also be locked to a single axis. We have two four-way hats and an analog stick excellently placed for thruster control. Five dials, a slider, a two-way modifier, seven switches, and three buttons bring a huge number of choices and flexibility not offered on our previous examples. Finally, a three-way dial allows for multiple mappings for various flight types or games. If your budget allows, this is an excellent choice for the serious flight and space sim pilot. Now we get to what many consider to be the pinnacle of flight simulation controls, the fantastic all-metal Thrustmaster Warthog. This one-to-one -one replica of the U.S. Air Force A-10 Warthog aircraft has been my HOTUS of choice for many years, so admittedly I'm a huge fan. Starting with the stick, we're given four three-way hats with one at your thumb and a single eight-way. A two-stage primary trigger, secondary trigger, side button and pinky trigger, and large pinky pull lever round out the features. The all-metal construction makes it a joy to hold, however, for some, the fixed stick lacking twist for yaw will be a limiting factor as this will all but necessitate the purchase of flight pedals, a possibly significant additional expense. The throttle offers us a split dual-axis design, similar to the X56, with two four-way hats, a small pointer analog stick, and three two-way thumb switches. The lighted base offers nine switches and two buttons with a single slider access. The quality is apparent with its all-metal construction and considerable heft. While mounting is the preferred way to enjoy the Warthog, its weight and large bases make desk use very stable. If you have the budget for the Warthog, I couldn't recommend it more and am a huge fan. Closing out our options, we'll look at a newcomer to the HOTA space with the sky's the limit budget Verpal products from the Belarus-based Verpal controls. These are arguably the best, highest quality flight simulation products on the market offering extreme build quality, all metal fully adjustable gimbals, and mirrored left and right stick choices for the dual stick pilot. They offer several stick and base options with the Mongoose T50 stick offering three hats, five buttons, a dual stage trigger, and analog braking lever. While it is produced from plastic, the quality is superb with an adjustable grip and separate stick and base design, which is actually directly compatible with the Warthog stick. Available in a mirrored left-handed configuration, this is by far the highest quality option for dual stick enthusiasts. Verpal's recently released Mongoose T50 throttle is all metal designed with two position adjustable dents for the split throttle which offers four hats, four buttons, and a wheel axis. The base provides eight momentary buttons, six rocker switches, one under security cover, two fuel range dials, three incremental dials, a single protected safety button, a slider axis, and five-way mode switch. The mode switch allows for various controller mappings for different flight or ship types or various games. Like the Warthog, the stick doesn't offer twist, for many necessitating the purchase of flight pedals as well, increasing the price. If you're building a money-is-no-object flight setup, it's hard to argue that the Verpal VPC products are currently the single best choice available on the market today. Finally, I should give mention to the VKB Sim Gunfighter Mark II. This is a stick-only solution as the VKB TECS throttle that was announced in December of 2017 has yet to come to market. Like Verpal, VKB Sim is known for their extremely high quality products with all metal parts and gimbals. I'm currently flying their T-Rudder Mark IV pedals and I'm a huge fan of them. The Gunfighter Mark II offers us four hats, three buttons, a two-way rocker, two-way trigger, and pinky lever trigger. Using the same connection types as the Verpal and Warthog, this facilitates several mounting options and extensions that are widely available on the market. Like the Verpal, if money is no object, VKB Sim products are some of the best currently available. Now that we've looked at all the various options, what would I recommend to someone making their first HOTUS purchase? Well, like many things, that depends on a number of factors. 
If your budget is extremely limited, the Thrustmaster T-Flight is an excellent starter HOTUS. If your budget allows, I feel the Logitech X52 is the best bang for the buck, offering a number of input choices with an excellent visual style and feel for its relatively low price. Finally, if you have a rather high budget, either the Warthog or Verpal products are fantastic choices. As Ferris said it, if you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Personally, I've owned the Warthog for more than five years and have loved every minute of my 3,800 hours in Elite flying it. Had the Verpal products been available when I made my purchase, I would have likely chosen them, but don't feel like you can go wrong with either choice. My least favorite of all the devices I tested was the T16000M, as while it's not necessarily a bad device, for the money, the low build quality of the throttle, combined with the limited input choices and poor button placement on the stick, made it a frustrating controller when compared to the other choices, especially the X52. As I said in the beginning, this is a highly subjective topic, so no doubt many will disagree with my opinions. If you do, I hope you'll share your thoughts with others in the comments below. Hopefully this look at the multitude of HOTUS options has helped you with your purchasing or wish list decision, and if not, that I can answer any further questions in the comments below. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching. that look at HOTUS options helpful, I hope you'll check out my other content and that you'll join me on my weekly live streams, Tutorial Tuesdays, and the Creators Roundtable each Friday, and that you'll consider supporting my efforts via Patreon. 